can you run when you don't know the way of the Spirit? Oak House Church brings to you the word of life which is able to build you up and offer you an inheritance among all those that are sanctified. Sit back and listen, and may your life become more like that of Christ as you encounter His Word. God bless you. You're welcome to church. You're welcome to the presence of God. You're welcome to Jesus. Um, we want to thank God again for a new year. New year. We have started a new year. This is the first month of the year 2023. And you know, I, like I have said before, January is not the new year. But it is difficult to drive you out of that tradition. It's very difficult. It's almost impossible. Just like uh, December 25th, just like December 25th, is not the birthday of Jesus. Jesus Christ was not born on the 25th of December. He wasn't born. I'm not even sure he was born in December. So Christmas doesn't exist. It doesn't hold. But because the world had decided to do that, so we seize that opportunity, that time of break, we rest, preach the gospel, do all of that. Not that Jesus Christ was born, not that we are celebrating the death of Jesus Christ on that day. I'm like Jesus Christ, because I don't know my birthday. I'm true, I'm telling you the truth, I don't know. So I just cooked up one particular day and put it. I said, this is it. So I made a miss. I didn't know when I used to be on Facebook. You know, when you were opening your Facebook account, they would ask you for your birthday. So I forgot. I gave them one date. I think it's on 2nd of February that I wrote. So next time again, when I was filling a form, I don't know when, I, f- I filled 18th February. So I have two birthdays. So one day, it went, the Facebook now, when they start sending me birthday, on the 2nd of February, they will send me my happy birthday. And then those of them who know me, they will start congratulating me, calling me, say happy birthday. I say happy birthday for who? He says, it's funny. So that's when I will not remember that. Okay. Initially, I was confused. I didn't know what was happening. So it was when I gave it a deep thought. I now remember that this is what I did. But on the other hand, my birthday is 18. Uh, it's only my, my mom or my dad that could tell my birthday. But they are late. They are no more. So me, I don't know. And I'm not bothered. To know. Amen. So that is how it is. New Year. The new year actually starts in October. That's when Jesus, God said, Let this month, when the children of Israel were about to leave Egypt, He said, Let this month be the first month to you, the month, the first month of the year. Let it be the first month. It's called Nisan. That's what they finally call it. In the Hebrew word, they call it Rosh Hashanah. And that is actually the, week, the, the calendar that God Almighty uses to walk, do whatever that is doing on earth. But there is nothing. So, but because of the way it is. Just like I gave you an example about Easter, I mean Christmas. That's how it is like. So, but what do you do? God has started something because every new year God comes up with something new for his people and all of that. So, he has started it as far back as October. So, we are trying to catch up. Amen. 
Don't worry, I know it's going to be a very difficult thing for you to adjust, some of us to adjust in our mind. But whatever be, whatever happens, New Year is New Year. There is an adage in our place that says, whenever, whenever you wake up from your sleep, is your morning. Uh-huh. But just make sure that you don't wake up in December and say December is your morning. Wake up early. Praise the Lord. Now I want to talk to us about... How do I put it now so that they won't give it a different name? Um, there, the three, the three levels in the realm of the supernatural, the three dimensions or the three levels of the supernatural, supernatural, the three levels. I'm going to just mention them and then I stay on one. Three levels of the supernatural. In the realm of the supernatural, there are three levels. The first level, the entrance level, is faith. Is the entrance level. The second level is the spirit is the anointing. And then the third level is the glory of God. The faith, then the anointing, and then the glory of God or the presence of God. The presence of God. There are three dimensions of this. The first one being faith. Faith, the Bible says it comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Then that is where your faith comes. And even in that faith, there are three dimensions of that faith again. So you see, I want you to listen very carefully. Because we are going to do some practicals this morning. So after the theory, we are going to do the practicals. The supernatural has three dimensions. The faith, the anointing, and the presence of God. The faith, you get faith by... Hearing the word, according to Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. So that one is, um, is a kind of a slow process because you have to keep hearing it and keep hearing it until that it builds. But there is another dimension which is the anointing. It gets the job done faster faith. The anointing gets the job done fast. When you are under the anointing, you don't just have to start confessing, speaking, calling forth the things that be not as though they were and all of that. Under the anointing, any word you utter, under that anointing, the presence of God, the, the, the anointing, the presence of the Holy, the power of the Holy Spirit is made available. It's available, the atmosphere is charged and all of that. You begin to that's where you can cast out devil, you can heal the sick, you can do all kinds of whatever. But then there is another dimension, which is the presence of God. When the pres- presence of God shows up, the impossible happens. That is where, that is where you can't even do anything. You can't even say anything. You just watch and see God move. When the glory of God, just like we read in the Old Testament, he said, when the glory of God showed up, the priest could not even stand to this. You can't speak. God takes control. That's why David said, even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I'm not afraid because 
You are with me. I know, brother, God takes control. God fights your battle by himself. So, to be able to activate, to get to that rev, uh, level or to that realm, that is the glory of God and all of that, there are things you need to get together in order to operate in that realm. And uh, no individual, no individual can carry that because that thing is a corporate thing. But to a very little dimension, you can manifest it, the glory of God in the life of a person. It's only Jesus Christ that had the fullness of it. That's why if you read Ephesians chapter 1, it talks about, in 2021, 20, it talks about the fullness of him that filled all in all. It talks about Jesus Christ giving him to be the head of the church, which is the fullness. So it's the church that carries the fullness of the glory of God, not an individual. It's not a pastor. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a bishop. Is not a, an apostle. Is not a prophet. The glory. He said, "Which is his body?" Give me twenty-two. I don't want to say. I just want to highlight all this, and I go back to what I want to do. What God wants to do with us this morning, and had put all things under His feet. Whose feet? Whose feet? Whose feet did He put all everything under? And had put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is what his body, which is what the fullness of him, the fullness of Christ that filled all in all. The church is the fullness of the manifestation and the glory and the power of God. No individual, the one that the individual carries is just one tiny. If you can, you can talk about the Old Testament and all of that, they can manifest it to a degree, just like in the life of Moses. The Bible said that his face shone, that the children of Israel could not behold his face. But then the Bible says that if that glory was that more, how much more the glory of the New Testament? That one exceeds all. I don't have the time because that's not what I want to deal with today. So like I said, you have... The three levels on the, in the realm of the supernatural, because we, are, we operate in the supernatural, we are not supposed to operate in the flesh. The Bible says, quit ye like men, men. You know, sometimes, I, I hear this testimony, somebody, you know, these Alaya people, they stop you, they will shout, and you are begging them, you are doing this and all of that, some of you will get afraid. The other time I was discussing with them and some people say, ah, these people, ah, pastor, you need to fear them. Ah, pastor, these people are very dangerous. So, ah, pastor, this one, are, these people are like this. These people are, I, I was just looking at you. Something, a, a holy anger was just welding up from within me. I was just one simple question. Didn't the Bible say that he that is in you is what? You, you see, that's why I keep saying, you hear this, but you don't believe it. You don't believe it. You've not known it at all. Because you are still afraid. Who is in them? Who is in those uh, liars? And who, who, who is actually operating in them? Who is actually operating? The devil is operating in them, is he not? In you, who, who is operating? Call him Holy Spirit. Call him Jesus. Call him God. He's inside of you. And then... Satan is doing what? Subduing Jesus. The Satan that is in them is intimidating Jesus that is inside of you. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. That's part of the thing we are going to address this morning. Something is wrong. And he said that God has not given you the spirit of what? We read it, we don't believe it. That's my problem. I don't know where this woman's psalm is coming from. So, let's leave it, let's come to faith. 
faith has three dimensions. The faith, again, that comes by hearing is actually where the wisdom of God comes. When you study the word of God, the word of God is wisdom. When you come to study the word of God, you come to a place, a point where you know God's word and you begin to put God's word into practice and all of that. It makes you wise. It builds. Just like you have the spirit of wisdom, you also have the wisdom that comes through this. But it is this one that leads you to this. The other one, the spirit of wisdom can be imparted. It can be imparted in a person. But you see, and you get the job done faster. But the one that is working with wisdom through the knowledge of the word of God and all of that will finally catch up with it. See where the problem with this spirit is. Those people who operate in the spirit, who see vision, revelations and all of that. You know, you get to, there are things you do, you get to that level. But the problem with them, the problem with them is that because they don't have a word foundation at all. When you look at them at the end of the day, you see that they have not achieved much, anything. They don't know how to sustain it. Because you don't have the word foundation. The word foundation is of essence. And so they play down on it and leave you and say, it's not about the word, it's about, it's about spirit, it's about spirit. They can't sustain that thing. After a while, you look at them. And some of them have fallen by the wayside. And some of them, when you look at them, at the end of the day, nothing to show. Because if you are there, if, because it's a higher realm. Hello? It's a higher realm. If you are there, that thing supposed to impact on your life as an individual. And when somebody sees you, so they don't know how to sustain that thing because they don't have the foundation of the world. They are not interested in the world. They don't read the world. They don't have respect and regard for it. So you have the faith, which is the first, the faith that comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. But then, thank you very much, I see I can hear now. Then the second one is the spirit of faith. Faith is a spirit, so it can be imparted again. The first one is Romans chapter 10, 17. The second one is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. It talks about the spirit of faith. You can operate in that realm. You can leave this first realm, this entrance, and then move. But it is this first one that will lead you to the second realm. And it is the second realm that will lead you to the third realm. There is another one that is called 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. It calls it the gift of faith. <laughs> there is faith. There is the spirit of faith and there is the gift of faith. I say 1 Corinthians 12, 9. To another faith by the same spirit is called the spirit of faith. This one is the a by manifestation by the Holy Spirit. And what this one can do, hmm? what the spirit of faith can do, when a man is possessed by the spirit of faith, what you can do, the spirit of faith can make this beauty disappear. That it will no longer be in the existence here. You come, you see an ordinary ground, ordinary spirit. There is nothing it cannot do. Is that same spirit of faith can command this iron? Iron, this iron will become like a tree that bear fruit. Spirit of faith. And there are things you need to get to. It's a gift. But there are things you need to do in order to operate it. So let's go back to the first. Faith. 
Now, something about faith. The faith it has laws. You know, because this is the new year, like I was saying, we want to believe the January is a new year for us. And so we start with it. And as because we are in a new year, you have to have your dreams, you have to have your goals, you have to have your, your things you are pursuing. Because if you don't have it, your faith will achieve very little or even nothing. If you don't have goals, if you don't have dreams, if you don't have visions, that your faith will accomplish little or nothing. Because the Bible says in Hebrew chapter 11, verse, in Hebrew chapter 11, verse 1, the Bible says, now faith is a substance of things. What? So what, those things you are hoping for, they are your goals, they are your dreams, they are your aspirations, they are your visions. You have not seen them. These are the things you want to accomplish. That's hope. If you don't have it, your faith will not work. Because faith is used to accomplish your hope. So if you stay for the whole of this year, you don't have a, you don't have goals, you don't have things you want to achieve, you want to a, accomplish, and all of that. You don't set goals. Your faith will be of no. You are just shooting. You are just shooting. Um, it's just like somebody who is uh, shooting aimlessly. No, whatever. You just hear gone. Ta, 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 ta. At the end of the day, nothing. It's just like a hunter that went inside the bush to go and hunt. And they entered the bush. Because he heard animal jumping everywhere and all of that. He entered the bush. He carries the gun and ta, 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 everywhere. Leaves of trees are falling and all of that. At the end of the day, how many game did you get? How many animal did you kill? But there is no target. You must have a goal. You must have targets. Not general. God have mercy on me. Mercy is a general thing. God have mercy on me for what? Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Who was calling? Blind Bartimaeus. And when Jesus came to him, he said, what do you want? Say it, narrow it. He said that I might have my sight, that I might hear, that I might be healed. So if you don't have a goal, it will not work. So what are your goals? I know you said spiritual goals, your physical, natural, the things you want to see happen, and all of that, you want to get married this year. It's a goal. But I'm going to show you how you get it done. You want to have X, Y, Z. You want to get married. You want to have a child. You want to have this. Whatever the problem, whatever the child, they can be goals and all of You want to do X, Y, Z. You have to know what you need. If you don't have a goal, your faith will not work. So many a time we are just praying and praying in the air, praying in the air, praying in the air, and shooting bullets everywhere. No particular dimension, no particular target, nothing in mind. That is just, you hear people when they say, they are just praying, they say, I need a job, I want a job. What kind of job? Any, any job, any job. Have you heard it before? They are like this people. What kind of job? He said, any job. One came to me, he said, I said, what kind of job do you want? He said, pastor, any one. I say, wow, that's good. So it makes my job easier. I said, there is a, a job now for a pilot. They need for a pilot to fly aeroplane. He said, my nose pilot. I said, okay, there is another one. He said, eh. Yeah, I said, yes. There's one hospital, they need doctors. He said, my nose, that one. Don't you have needs? Don't you have needs? Hello? Don't you have needs? So what are those needs? First, that's where the face begins. 
Okay, the lady who called me from Germany a few days ago, she said, this year, 2023, I have said what I want to do with my life and God. I want to be, this thing that we have been teaching and all of that, you say you want to be, she has made it a point of, you see this life, you say you must get there, and this is her year, and she has set that goal, and she is praying, and she is focused, so that when your eye is single, the Bible says your whole body will be what? full of life. So when you stand to pray or when you kneel to pray or when you squat, whatever position you take to pray, you are focusing on that. Your attention and everything is geared towards that. So that at the end of the day, at the end of the year, you'll be able to say, yes, what I set out to do, I've been able to do this. But at the end of the day, if you don't have it, There is no way you will say, yes, I have been able to do X, Y, Z. There is nothing you cannot do if you follow this. So you see, now, faith is a substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things you have not seen. So I put them down. For example, I want to get married. Okay? I have not seen the husband. He's in hope. I have not seen the wife. He's in hope. I want to get a job, X, Y, Z. It is hope. I have not gotten it yet. So you have to specify what they are. If you want to get this, your faith to work. Now, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with what? In the heavenlies. Everything that you need in this life. Remember the Bible said that God has given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. But where are they? They are out there in the heavens but you are here on earth. Every single thing that you will ever need in this life to get a job of, uh, to to get the work of God done and to take care of yourself and meet every single need in your life have been provided. They are not going to be provided. God is not going to provide them. God has made provisions for them. Give it to me. Everything that pertains to life and godliness. Blessed be the God and the Father. Okay. According as his divine power had given us all things that pertain unto what? Life and godliness. is true knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. Everything God has given us. Everything that pertains to life and godliness. He is not going to give you. It is given. Say it is given. Say the baby, the children, the babies are need is given. As a woman, the husband that I need, the wife that I need, the job that I need, the business that I need, everything, the good children that I need, every one of them have been given. They are there, settled. Is they are not going to be given. You know, I I, I love the way Victoria Ranze said it, put it that day. He said, we are now in 2023. It's not as though God in 2022, you know, the 2022 was rounding up. And then he started 
worrying and thinking about what is going to happen in 2023 and all of that. So let's just make sure that everything about 2023, where are the angels, where are the, the cherubims and all the heavenly hosts, just gather together to ensure that it doesn't do like, you see, everything about 2023 has been perfected before the foundation of the earth. What is going to happen in 2023 have been ordained, perfected. Everything that concerns your life, just like Jesus Christ came. The Bible says that as it is written in the volume of the books, before he was born by Mary and all of everything had been orchestrated, planned and designed, every single thing to the latest. So he came to fulfill every one of them. The same way concerning you, you are not here as for an accident. The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, he said we are his workmanship. Created not outside of Christ. It begins with Christ. It begins with the moment you come to Christ. It begins the moment you are born again, you are born again. You receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and as your Lord. That is when that program of God begins. So you see, the earlier you receive Christ in your life, the better the earlier you receive it and the earlier you have the knowledge. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had ordained, which God had before ordained that what will happen, that we should walk in it. There is an assignment. There is everything about your life has been programmed, designed by God. So what you need is to have a knowledge of it, understanding, have that knowledge. The more you know it, you put it into, that is where the wisdom of God, that's how you walk in the will of God, in the ways of God. When you talk about you are praying in the will of God, praying for the will of God, that I might be filled with the knowledge of his will, so that I will know the hope to which he has called me. So that I will understand my purpose, what he has sent me to do. Because everything that God has designed for you to do will bring you to the limelight. He will bring you to greatness. He will make you a great man. He will make you a prosperous and successful. Whatever. Everything about God is all. You can, your plan can never in any way match God's own. In terms of the quality of the life that God designed for you. We choose to live a low class life. Because that is what we want. We decided to do it on our own. Be rather, God has a better plan. A glorious one. Look at what he said in that Peter, first Peter. Go back there. He said, according as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to what? To glory and virtue. Your own is not glorious. Your life you are living is not a glorious one. Struggle to make ends meet. That's not God's design. So, everything that God has given to us, not will give, Everything he has made them available. However, the challenge now is that they are in the heavenly places. They are not here on earth. I am living here on earth, but all this is in heavenly. And it is in the name of Jesus Christ, in the account of Jesus Christ. Why didn't you why you are here on earth? As you are living here on earth, I am here on earth. Why didn't God? Put it in my name so that I don't have to. Why does God have to leave it in the heavens? Because the first time he tried it, it was lost. He put it in the hand of Adam, man. He got lost. Everything. He ruined every single thing. But this time around, he said, no. In the name of Jesus Christ, in his account. But now he has given us the power of our turning. So you can make withdrawal, so you can make 
So you can go to the bank and make that withdrawal. Just put in the check. Tell them, you can go to the bank and tell them, uh, I need some money. You just, they will give you, okay, you need money. Are you coming for withdrawal or they say withdrawal? And then they give you that they are asleep. And then you write, uh, withdrawal, I want to withdraw money and all of that. When you finish, you give it back to them. And the cashier will look at it and say, uh-uh. You didn't add how much. Because if you don't say how much you need, will they give you the money? So you have to be specific. So before you make that withdrawal, you have to know. So the question now, the major problem confronting you and I today as the body of Christ is this. How can I convert the heavenly resources that are put in me for me, that are God has made available for me in the name of Jesus Christ. How do I convert it to my own personal needs so that it become a reality in my life? That wife, that husband that is in the realm of his spirit, how can I take him or her so that she or he will be married to me so that we can hold her just like me and my wife? You know, my wife was before in the realm of the spirit. I don't mean that she's a spirit. I was in the realm of the spirit to her. We never met, but she wanted to get married. I wanted to get married. So it was hope. But finally, it became a reality. That's what, so how do you convert it into reality? It's by faith. But now look at the process, the dynamics of that faith. If you follow it, it will deliver to you. Hello. Hello. I do not want to care or know how bad your life is how the past year have been so challenging and all of that, how that everything is failing, how that you are afraid. I don't just want to, I don't, it doesn't bother any person, God, God-wise. What is interested is knowing what you need to do. And as a matter of fact, that is why all this, if you read Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, I don't know whether you have gotten to that point. Look at Genesis verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. But this heaven and the earth that he created, this is not the first world or earth or heaven. There have been one before. If you read the book of Hebrew, Hebrew 11, 1 and 2, it will tell you the worlds. There have been worlds that have been in existence anyway. Like in the days of Noah, that world and all that. Before the days of Noah, there was another world. So, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Look at what happened to that heaven and the earth with all the resources that were inside it. Verse 2, he said, and the earth was without what? And void. What does it mean? Give, me, give us um, NLT or NIV. He said, the earth was what? Formless and empty and darkness covered the deep waters. Give me NIV. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. That is your, compare this to your life and to your situation. I know you've been fasting and praying over time for a particular thing. I don't know the state of your life, what has happened to you and all of that. And this is actually what, when people get to this form, after some time, they try to change their situation and all of that, and they fail. They become frustrated, and then they take arms and start stealing and killing and doing all kinds of whatever. Christians, I mean. Ezekiel 37, verse 1. Ezekiel 37, verse 1. He said, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me in the middle of the valley of 
a valley, it was full of what? Give me um, King James so that you will see what he said about it. You will get the picture well. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of what? Bones. And caused me to pass by them round about and behold, there were very many in the open, in the open valley. And lo, they were what? They didn't say that they were dry. He said that they were very dry. That is to qualify the level of dryness. Very dry. Is your life like that? Is your situation like that? Is your problem like that? But you see, at the end of the day, that dry bone came back full of life. And then they fulfilled purpose. Because he's talking about Israel. And finally they fulfilled purpose. Dry bones. God was saying in a bit, uh, invariably that this is, he was telling, if you read, I don't want to go there yet now. He said, when you go there, you see, he said, these dry bones represent the children of Israel. That's how your life is dry disjointed, scattered all over the face of the earth. And he now asks Jeremiah, Ezekiel, can these bones live again? He said, I don't know. It's only you that has the answer. Of course, the answer is with God. So we're going to find out how. How you can make dry bones to live. How that your life that is void and formless and shapeless and useless can have shape, can have the direction, can become a beauty to behold in the hand of God. It can be. So you see, it does not matter. It is not about who you know. That is why God said, Woe unto him that put his trust. It's not about who you know. It's not about who you are connected to. It's about knowing God and having the knowledge of God's purpose and plans for your life. So the first process in that process of converting whatever is that your dream like remember what I say, first of all, you have to have a dream. You have to have a, even the church as an oak, oak house church and all of that will have a dream. There is a property they just told us be just directly opposite us and all of that is there. That could be our goal. That could be it. That is when we talk about the physical goal. Our spiritual goal. We have a, we have had a series of meetings here and all of that. We have mapped out. We have declared what they are. Our goal. Our target spiritually. And then on this other side, this is our goal. We are targeting that. I just I said I'm going to do practical with you. You know I love practicals. Is not the kingdom of God is not in talking. Is in the demonstration of the power and the spirit. <laughs> What I'm about to show you and do, we have done it before. You remember in those days in Elohim? Okay, we'll get there. The first stage you must do, you must activate the prophetic. Because it's by prophetic. There are dimensions. That's what I told you. I, is, you remember I told you the, there are three dimensions or levels in the supernatural. The first is faith. The second one is a, is what? Is the anointing. You need to know how to activate the anointing. Is activating the anointing. Because you need that anointing. If you don't get it, you cannot walk. Your confession of faith, you can keep confessing faith, confessing of it till Jesus comes. Maybe by the time Jesus comes, it will be answered. 
you need to activate. The prophetic activation. You need to know how to activate. Go back to Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. He said, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And verse 2, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Have you seen the state? Now, see what God did. He activated something, the spirit. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. You need to activate the power of the Holy Spirit. It has to be activated. If you don't activate it, you're wasting your time. You must learn how to activate the power of the Holy Spirit. Nobody will do it for you. That is why we are teaching it so that you will learn how to. And it is not just something that you do in January. This should be your pattern of life. This is the, the way you live your life. So how do I activate the prophetic? Before you begin to declare, you know the Bible says in Joel chapter 2 verse 28, it says, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon then after pouring out the spirit, what happened? Young men shall, shall prophesy. Old men shall dream dreams. And then visions and dreams and prophecies and all of that. But before then, the Holy Spirit will, he will have to be poured out. The Holy Spirit was moving upon the face of the deep. So you must know how to Activate the prophetic. If you don't know how to activate it, if you don't activate it, it will not work. All your word, all your confession will just be falling on the ground. Why is it that the Bible says in that if, um, 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 Isaiah 55, you say the word, my word is, uh, the, the word that has gone out of my mouth cannot return to me void. He says it's like the rain that come upon the earth. And water the earth and all of that, and provide food. He said, Such shall my word be that goeth out of my mouth. It cannot return to you. Why is it that when we are speaking and confessing that same word, nothing is happening? Because you need to do the first. Because if you follow God's pattern, that was what Elijah did. When you hear that Elijah commanded rain, heaven to be short. For three and a half years. Is it three and a half years? And for three and a half years, there was no rain and all of that. He didn't just come out and be speaking. He must have activated. Not that he must. He had activated this. The prophetic before he began to. So how do you activate the prophetic? Praying in the spirit. You build up your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. You engage in the place of prayer. You engage in the place of worship. You engage in the place, in place of studying and meditating in the word of God. That's how you activate it. If you don't do that, you cannot. So if your life, so when we talk about prayer, 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 you don't, you don't like prayers. You don't want prayer. You don't like prayer. When they call for prayer meeting on Friday now and all of that, nobody sees you. Then on Sunday we come and all of that is okay. But that is the much you can get. It has to be by prayer. And the kind of prayer you pray is by praying in the spirit. Praying in an unknown tongue. That's why the baptism is. That's why he said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So you start with that second level. The anointing of the Holy, the presence of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit. As you pray in the Spirit, he that prayeth in an unknown tongue, he defies himself. 
he that prayeth in an unknown tongue build up his most holy faith. You pray. You stir up. When you worship, when you worship, that is why you see part of our worship. You know, when we talk about worship is not just, you must have an understanding of what you are doing. Apart from the fact that you are ministering, you heard on Thursday about ministering to God ministering to the people and then ministering for God. Is that not what you said? You minister to God, you minister to the people, and you minister for God. Or first, you minister to God, minister for God, and then minister to the people. If you don't do that, if you don't minister to God, you cannot minister for God. And if you cannot minister for God, you cannot minister for the people or to the people. That's why your word over the people will be dry. Because it's empty word. It's later. It lacks, uh, it lacks the spirit. The letter lacks the spirit. That's why he said the letter kills. The spirit gives life. So provoke that spirit. That's why you need worship. You must be a worshiper. That's why God said, I'm seeking. One of the reasons why he said, I'm seeking for those who will worship me. I worship him in truth. Worship him in spirit. That thing will come. That anointing, the presence of the, you will activate the Holy Spirit. You will put him to work. He will show up. If you don't do that, you are not going to get anywhere. Life will continue to remain. You are not meant to live a life in the flesh. You are not meant to be pursuing this in the way these people are. That's why he said, do not go about like these people, the Gentiles. The way they are going about it and all of that. There is something that is smarter than what they are doing. There is something that will give you an edge, a very clear cut edge over what they are doing. Spend time in the presence of God. Wait upon God. Isaiah 40, 31 says, is it 30 or 31? Isaiah 40, 30, 31. It's a day that wait upon the Lord shall renew. It's not your own strength. That's your strength is renewed by the power of the Holy Spirit. For they that wait upon the Lord shall, he said, verse 30, he said, young men shall faint, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. When you are gotten to that point, look at what he said in verse 31. He said, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Start with this. That is why we say you must give attention to prayer. And then when you now come to prayer, you have to get your heart ready for it. But anyway, if I want to be very honest with you, at this particular stage, hmm, even if you are keeping malice, you will walk. If you are backbiting, you will walk. If you are stealing, you will walk. If you are committing fornication and adult, you will come. That's actually why those Matthew 7 people, that's what they do. You pray in the tongue, pray in tongues. Because tongues is a gift, it's not based on anything. You just yield it and the thing is given. So you pray. That's why if you judge people how genuine this person is by the miracles, by the anoint, I mean by the breakthroughs and by signs and wonders, if you want to judge people by that, how genuine they are and all of that, you will be at fault. You will make a very big mistake. The only thing that they will stay on this level 
The other, you know, I told you there are three realms in the supernatural. There are three levels. The first is the faith. The second is the, the anointing. The third, the glory of God. They will never. You can never see. You see, you have one spot or wrinkle or blemish in your heart. You will never touch the glory of God. You will never see. You won't smell it. It's not meant. It's not meant for, for anyhow Christians. The glory, the presence of God. Somebody that hides himself in the light. What kind of person is that? When you hide something, is it not you go find somewhere and open it and close? Nobody will see it. But he himself, he hides himself in the light. Bright light. That's why he said he dwells in the light unto which no man can see and approach. He's bright. He's pure. He's righteous. He's holy. When, when he shows up, hey, when God shows up, you know what you do? You just fold your hands. Keep quiet. You won't talk. He has taken control when he shows up. But he can't show up when all the bitterness are. But if you are talking about anointing, just speak in tongues and or pray in tongues. You pray in tongues, the thing will come. And then you can even move to the next level of it. But it won't get you anywhere. You can finish all those things and you find yourself in hell. Did you hear what I said? You can finish all those things and prophesy and all of that. You can make all the prophecies and all of that. At the end of the day, you end up in hell. Do you know why? Because your heart is dead. And because of what God is going, that is why he said in Isaiah 60, he said, arise, shine, for your light is come. The anointing has risen upon you. Is that what he said? What has risen upon you? It's the glory. The kind of thing, just what you're going to see. Is just, we just moved in. We just stepped in. You're going to see the kind of mind boggling and miracles and kinds of move of God you're going to see. And one thing about it is that it's going to be happening with ease. Because it's God that is doing it. It's not in your he's not in he has nothing to do. He just prepare yourself. God shows up and he does it. So when we talk about this aspect, provoking the anointing is actually spending time in the presence of God in prayer. And the kind of prayer is praying in the Holy Spirit. And then make sure you worship. You offer incense to God. You minister to God. If you read that Acts 13, we, we heard last Saturday, last Thursday, is it not Act 13? And when they minister to God, it was when they minister to God and then the Holy Spirit said, And the problem has always been that a lot of us don't know, we don't, we don't even know what it means to minister to. Anyway, I think that one was dealt with on Thursday. I don't have to flog it again. So, when you worship, when you pray in the spirit, when you wait on God, when you have fellowship with him, one-on-one, -on -one, stay in his presence, and all of that, studying the Bible, and then meditating in the word of God, and all of that, you provoke the Holy Spirit. He shows up. And then from there, you move to the next level. From here, when it is provoked, when you have activated the prophetic, the next thing is that, you get to the next level, which is impartation. Your soul, your spirit is full. He imparts you. Now he is present. Then he imparts your soul. He fills you. That's when you say, feel me. That's when you say, when you hear the prophet say, and the hand of the Lord was upon me to do X, Y, Z. And the spirit of God was upon me. And the hand of God come upon me. That's when the thing, you, you feel the, the, the presence of God, the energy of the spirit in your soul. You know. A couple of things happen. So, 
So, when that happens, and when it happens to you, you will know. <laughs> when it happens, you will know. And sometimes you are praying in the spirit, and you're praying, and you're praying, and praying, and praying. Or maybe you're worshiping, and you're worshiping. Maybe you're studying the word, and all of that. And then, your soul, you are full. The hand of God comes upon you. The difference is there. There are a couple of things that happen. Sometimes is your, I don't want to go into it because of people now, they will build a, a doctrine out of it. They will now leave the substance and pursue the shadow. Sometimes you feel a burning sensation on your heart. Sometimes your leg or your whatever, one part of your whatever feels so hot and heavy. Sometimes you have the feeling of somebody is putting a coat, a, another dress upon you. They call it coat upon coat. You feel heavy. Is a, you know something happened. If that is where, that's when you have entered the circle. It happened. And this is how we need to live our life. Daniel, that is how, that, all this thing they did, that is how he did it. Elijah, that is how they did it. All these men, this is the same thing. Give me First Samuel chapter 10, verse 5. Is it? First Samuel 10, 5. After that thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines, and it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, thou shalt meet a company of who? Prophets coming down from where? The high places with what? And, 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 what are they doing with it? What has prophet got to do with the half? And they can't function with their this. Hello? I said they cannot function with their this. Because that's where they provoke those things. Worship. If you are a prophet and you are not a worshiper, I doubt. I doubt. If you are a prophet, and if you are a worshiper, if you are a worshiper, if you are a prophet and you are a worshiper, there are certain things you will not permit. You are a worshiper. And when in the New Testament, all of us are prophets. But not prophet as per a sitting prophet that has a the prophet. A sitting prophet that has a seat. He say, yeah. And that you are a seer does not make you a prophet. Who is a prophet? A prophet of God, the one that is in the office of a prophet, is the one that designs the mind, the purpose, the plan of God, and brings it to the people. He hears from God about because what God is is about His purpose, His plan. What God is working. God is just like Jesus said, as I see my father walk, there is a walk that he's doing. God is doing that. So a prophet is able to go to God, get delivery of God's mind, God's purpose, God's counsel, and then he brings it to the people. So when somebody says, there is somebody here, your singlet you are wearing is red. Or you just park your car at such and so place. Or you are just coming from your house now, this is what happened. That doesn't make you a you can be a You can be Balaam. Because those things are not the thing. The prophet deals with the things of God. Your clothes is not the things of God. It's the things of this world. Your bed and your car is not the things. Your job is not the things of God. They are the things of hey, somebody. God is about to give you whatever. He is, you have not done anything. You are not. A, it doesn't make you a prophet. Now, 
that's where you, you remember that young guy, you remember that man. I don't want to, when we were, here is in this Lagos, in Ogudu. That church we use. One bishop that came, he will give you, he will give you the, the, your plate number. He will tell you the, your plate number. He will be in the church here and all of that. Tell you the plate number. Tell you the color of your car. Tell you how many children you have. He will tell you all those in the name of order. You know all those things are lies. You know they finally called that man. That same bishop, they finally called him. Hello? Just wait. Should be you say I told you. You are going to see this Balaam, this prophet of you are going to see them. The false prophets, the false seers, you're going to see all of them, and they are going to be so much because when God begins to move, they will also rise up. The seven sons of sin. And if you are not careful, you will not be able, you will think they are of God, you will know that they are of the devil. So, provoking the prophetic is by worship. And then when you do that, you move to the next level, which is in the level of faith. God imparts your spirit with the Holy Ghost. You come under the heavy presence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And you will know. No, you see, you can stay in the place of prayer for three hours. When you finish, you come out, you are sitting dry. Am I correct? Oh, you don't believe me. Am I correct? You can finish and all of that, you are still dry, nothing. But when you pray, when you worship, you get into that realm, the second realm, the impartation, imparts your spirit, your soul. Come under the anointing. You feel heavy, coat upon coat. A part of your body or your whole body. There was a time I had a kind of I couldn't sleep in the night. I went and poured water on my body. No way. The thing was, you, you, you can't, co- you see, when that thing comes, you can't contain it. Eh? Remember how it happens? When it comes up, sometimes eh, your whole system will be because the thing has come so heavily upon you. It comes through prayer, waiting in the presence of God, staying in his presence. It comes through worship. It comes through meditating, studying and meditating in the word of God. That is why you keep saying, he said the word of God, you shall meditate on it day and night. And I've told you before, and I want to say it again, meditating day and night is not waking up early in the morning or waking up early late in the night. And all of that's not day and night what it means. It means in the, the day is made up of 12 hours. The night is made up of 12 hours. So what he's telling you is all the days of your life, stay on the word of God. Think about God every time. Let your heart be set on him. Think about heaven. He said, now that you are born again, according to Colossians, he says, set your mind on the things that we are aware Above and not the things that are. When do you do that? This day and night, every day, 24 hours in a day. Spend time. Because you see, eh, when you do that, hello, hello. John chapter 3, verse 5. John 3, 5. Jesus also said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of what the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Verse 6. He said, That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is what? Spirit. Verse 7. He said, Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. Verse 8. He said, The wind bloweth where it listeth. You will be moving like a wind. You, you are under the influence and the anointing, the presence. You are under the control of the Holy Spirit. That's what it means to be full of the Spirit. 
and this is how your life will be like. He said, the wind blow away where he listens, and thou hearest the sound thereof. But you can't tell where he comes from and where he's going to. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. <laughs> See, this is what Jesus, the Bible, the Word of God meant when he said, walk out your salvation with fear. You need to work it out. This thing has been made. The provision of this thing has been given. It's been made available. Go, take it. Go, make it work. Go, take delivery of it through your prayer life, through your worship life, through the studying of the word. You can now see the reason why we said in that January 1st, make sure you pay attention to the studying of the word, attention to prayer, attention to worship, attention to meditating in the word of God and all of that. That is the reason. When you do that, you, you, you infuse yourself. You're operating, you're activating the second phase of that, the prophetic. You get to a point where your soul, your spirit and soul is searched with the presence of the Holy Spirit. And you will feel it and you will know. And then after that, the next level, the next stage you're going to get to is the, the phase of revelation, prophetic revelations and dreams and visions. You begin to see dreams. You begin to have dreams. You begin to have visions. You begin to have word of knowledge. You begin to have revelations. Things are being revealed and shown. Not the devil can do that too. You begin to hear, thoughts says the Lord. You begin to, so sometimes when you, that is the reason why, that time when you open the Bible, when you open the Bible, when you read the Bible, somebody, somebody will be wondering, where are you getting, is it not the same Bible I'm reading? What's happening? It's revelation, that same place where that same Bible you've been reading. Revelation will start coming out of it. New things, you are going to be seeing things and it comes alive. The life that is because Jesus said, the word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are what? Life. That it, it start coming out. You can understand the reason why we don't want, you see this book called the Bible. It's sealed. That's why the Bible said they are ever learning and never come to the knowledge of the truth. And Jesus put it this way. He said, you go search the scripture, thinking in it you shall find eternal life. He said, but we are looking at one. See, because the letter kills, the spirit gives life. So revelation begins to come. You read things and you see, you will be able to divide, dividing the word of God, wisdom of God. The Holy Spirit begins to teach you. The Holy Spirit begins to show you things. That scripture we say, when the Holy Spirit comes, it shall show us, it shall teach us, it shall do this. That is when it begins to happen. So, at this particular stage now, you begin to, you have done the first stage, you have done the second stage, you come to the third stage. Revelation, that's why he said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Men shall see visions, old men, dreams, revelations of different kinds word of knowledge, and all of that. Discerning of spirit. Discerning of spirit. You just know. You just know that there is something wrong here. You just know that this thing that this person is saying, there is a lie. You know that, you see, let me, hello. 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 You know, when you see people who live in the flesh a lot, and who co try to cover up, who try to cover up their Cover up. I have said it here several times. The only way you can stand here and say something and deceive me and I don't know it. Hmm? The only time you can tell me something that this is, I will say this is, say it's not like that. It's not true. The only way you can do that and say that and deceive me is if I am in the flesh. If I'm operating in this level, you can't. 
I may not be able to know exactly what it is, but deep inside me, inside me, I know you are a liar. I know you are lying. There is nothing you can. You can't deceive a spiritual man. Because a lot of us, we just say things and get away. We feel that everybody is like you. You feel that the Christianity is, uh, is uh, you know, there is this white belt that fly. You see them, they fly in group. He said, hey, I don't know what they call it again in there. It's not Chekeleke. Chekeleke. Flamingo. Eaglet. Okay. So when he's flying, you are calling, he say, give me, give me, give me white fingernail and take my black fingernail. Give me white fingernail and give me my black and take my black fingernail. Give me one. He, then after some time, he said, hey, come and see, come and see. My fingers are white. Oh, it's white. How many of you did it? It was one day in the village I saw those birds flying. I started chanting the same thing they were chanting. Because I learned it from my sisters and all of that in the village. I said, Check it, can you move on? Check it, can you move on? I was saying it until they disappeared. So I couldn't see them anymore. I now turned my fingers. Nothing, nothing. My fingers were still the same. So that was when I now had double mind. I used to think it was true. Until that day I did it. So that's how a lot of Christian, a lot of us think Christianity is like. I don't know what we call. You can lie to a carnal Christian and deceive him. They can come and dupe the church and tell you that they are selling this land and all of that. And you go, haven't you, haven't you seen 419 dupe churches? Haven't you? Why? Because they didn't know. Why didn't they know? If you stand before me and you are telling me stories, I'm asking you certain things and you say it's not true. I know you are lying. I know you are saying the truth. How many of you have the Holy Spirit inside your mind? How many of you have the Holy Spirit? Let me tell you something. If, if, I, F, if the Holy Ghost is inside of you hmm, and he's alive, you have not grieved him. And you have not, you know, you can grieve him and you can quench him. True or false? If you have not grieved him, if you have not quenched him, no one can deceive you. No one, except you choose to be deceived. I said, nobody, nobody can do 419 with you and get it. Oh my God. Do, who do you think we are? Who do you think a Christian is? A believer in Christ? It's because we have left our estates. And have joined the rest of the world in their own estate and all of that. And that is why all these things are happening. Stay away. That is why God is saying, come out from among them. Touch not the unclean things. Stay separate. Stay clean. When we talk about purity and holiness and righteousness, it's not just for nothing. It's for a reason. You are not like them. You are living a higher life. Brother Kumu, he calls it a deeper life. Deeper than, it's not a surface thing. The 700 club called it another life. There is another life. There is a realm that we just brought ourselves down here and be middling with this and, and all of that. You are confused. You don't know whether this one is a genuine man of God or the other one. And you see, great men of God have given approval to fake ministers of the gospel. And you won't know. If you have the Holy Ghost inside of you, if you have 
have not grieved him. He has not quenched him. And somebody says something that is off. The Holy Spirit inside of you, he will react. Many a time, he will not say anything. You will lose. You will lose your comfort. You will say, I'm not comfortable with this. I, I don't know. You, you know that young man that gave the testimony last week? About the guy that called him to come and carry the car. What did he say? Is that young man here? Uh, they have one leg today. They, 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 they are off and on. God have mercy on us. God have mercy on this uh, generation. Okay, he's from Ikota Church. Okay, okay. Wonderful. Now, you see what, did you hear what he said? He said, when the guy called him, he said, how much? He said, is it 30,000? And he would do the job in the night. He would just go in the night, carry the car and return it. In the morning, he would continue his business. Just 30,000 uh, 30, are just like that, without any effort and all that. And the guy would give him transport money to go to where the car is, and he would bring it back, and he would give him his 30,000 case clothes. But what did he say? He's not Jinjim like you. Thank God you say he's from Ikota. You need to go to Ikota. He's not as Jinjim. But he said, I've lost my peace. It's the Holy Ghost reacting. It's in every man. It's in every woman. Even when a man comes and proposes to you and says, I want to marry you, and you know, you know inside of you whether he's genuine or not. I'm not talking about whether he's the one that God wants you to marry or not. Uh, because say there is a speck God made for me. And uh, what if that speck dies? There is nothing like that. Because when you go to the market, there are uh, this shoe. My shoe is size 44. It's not only this one size 44 that is in the market. There are so many size 44 in the market. So when somebody has collected this one, find another size 44 that will fit you. If you do, if your heart is okay, the Holy Ghost is working, is free. Let my heart be the temple of your spirit. Let my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace. Let me be a holy habitation where your spirit is free to dwell. When we sing that song, it has a deep meaning where the Holy Spirit is free to live. Whenever anybody wants to hurt you, whenever anything bad is about to happen to you, whenever you want to take a, a wrong step, he will alert you. You may, for some who do not know understand the voice of God because with the voice when God is speaking this small still voice if you don't there is this one that is general every that's why he said be careful for nothing but in everything with prayer and supplication in, with thanksgiving let your request be made known what now happens in peace you are peace And when that peace, if you don't know the meaning of peace, if you don't know how peace is, you can know what peace is by knowing what peace is not. When you have a, a bad news, you are happy now, relax. When you hear, get a bad news from somewhere, that thing that happens to you, you become worried, you become anxious, full of anxiety and all of that. You start panicking. You become restless. Your peace has been taken. It means something is wrong. It's a signal that there is something wrong going on. So, how do we do it? The first one is activating the what? 
The prophetic. How do you activate the prophetic? Then the second le- level, impartation. That is the Holy Spirit in and God imparts your spirit. And I say there are evidence, there are signs. You know. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. I know what joy that fill my soul. Something happened now. I know. <laughs> When he touches you, you will know. When that thing comes, you will know. Christianity is not a religion. It's a, it's, it's a relationship. When, when, when your, your girlfriend or your boyfriend, when I mean boyfriend and girlfriend, I don't mean that type. The one that is good. That is your friend, pure, clean. And all of that, and then you are seeing vision for the lady or for the guy, and finally you agree to get married. You know you're falling in love. And then one day you guys are moving like this, and that, and you hold hands. You know what the thing will be doing in your heart. Will be doing you something in your heart. You'll be happy. Your holding hand will be someone that you love. You will know. When he touches you, you will know he touched you. That is the realm. So after that, the next realm I said is what? The realm of prophetic what? Revelations. It comes in dreams, it comes in visions, it comes in the reading of the Bible, it comes in discerning of the spirit, discerning. You will know when something is wrong and when something is right and all of that. Something something goes off, you will know, you just feel it. it is, it's not this type of, forget, you know, there are, there are the fake ones and there are the, you know, there are people who say, I'm sensing in my spirit, it's jealousy. Is envy. I'm sensing in my spirit. This thing that this guy is saying is not of God. Because he's jealous of the guy. Yeah, yeah, he say, I'm sensing, I'm sensing there is evil spirit around you. You don't mind him. It's your lie. I, I, that's not the one I'm talking about. Even when somebody is saying that, when the person says, I'm sensing that is evil spirit, I'm sensing that this is, a, you know, when they say, you that is in the spirit, you know that he's lying. Then we we'll come to the the final stage. There are actually two stages in this final stage. It is this realm of legislation. You legislate. It is a realm where you govern. It's a prophetic government. It's a prophetic legislation. It's a prophetic declaration. That is where you make professions of your faith. That's where you confess. That's where you speak. At that point, where anything that you are saying is like God is saying it. That's why he said in that Genesis chapter 1 in verse 3, he said, and the spirit of God moved. The spirit was activated. And God, because he is God, he is anointing, he is everything. And then he doesn't need to go through all this. He's just giving us, because he is God on that other side, he doesn't need to be imparted. You can't impart God. So what God did was to set the spirit in motion. And the Holy Ghost was there because the the Holy Spirit is a creative ability and power of God. And so when the Holy Spirit came on, on board, God began to speak and let there be. And what happened? So that is when you now begin to call things that be not as though they were. 
That's when you begin to speak to your husband to come. You speak to your wife to come. You speak to your business to come. You speak to whatever that is the problem that is prevailing over your life. You, are, you can alter it. You can change it. Because, you see, any legislation you are making now, any decree that you are giving, it shall decree a thing and it shall be established for you. That decree that you are going to make must be in line with who? With God's will. Don't start decreeing, seeing vision for me. Because I am off the shelf. I'm not in the market for sale anymore. Don't see vision for somebody because you can't marry, you can't go and profess. You say, God, no. And even if the person is engaged and all of that, leave the person alone. Go and because that's why I said, if you have a cloth now, you know there is size 12, size 15, different, and all of that. It's not only one size 15 that is in the market, is it? Even that particular cloth you are wearing now, that particular cloth you are wearing, that size, there is another size like that of the same color. So go. Anyone you, hello, it doesn't matter how you look. Whether you are the one that is, you know, there are people who are big. Ladies, fat, big. Big leg, big arm, big arm. There are men who cannot sleep without such people looking at them. They are always in their mind. That's their specification. That's their desire. That's their longing. That's what they want. They love it. Everybody has his own. Everybody has his own spec. I have my own. I got mine. You have your own. I may not see. Some people, when I see some women and all of that, and they are married, how did the man marry this kind of person? I must be honest with you. But I found out. I found out. It is that person's spec. And if that person has seen a kind of my wife before he married, you might not like her. True or false? You won't like her, you won't keep her. Yeah, but see, are you not, you see that young man, we, uh, the young lady that came to your office in Abuja says he was looking for a job. Look, the woman is fat. She has only her own day. And he's, she doesn't dress well. He looks so tattered and so unclean and so unkept. Is it not true? Now, somebody that somebody that owns a company that is looking for staff now called her on the phone. He said, I need a staff. She said, uh -huh. she, he first of all said to her, um, I know you will be, you he will not, he won't, he won't believe what I'm about to tell you. He said, what is it? He said, actually, and the lady is not intelligent. He said, actually, I need somebody that is fat. Somebody that is not intelligent. Somebody that doesn't dress well. I need the person as... as a finance person in my office. We are saying, uh, uh, you never seen God. You don't know God yet. Everybody, as we are differently and all of that, God has designed and packaged you, everything for you. That's where they say what is meat for one person is a poison to It could be a poison to you, but it's a meat for another person. He said, why? Uh, uh. He said, truly, yeah. he said, yes, I know, because when I give you the qualifications of the person, I know that is what your reaction will be like. He said, actually, because where we work, you see all these uh, laborers and workers and all of that. If you are ugly and all of that, they will not look in your direction. And if the person is very intelligent, he will steal his money. So he needs somebody who is not intelligent. He needs somebody who is not attractive at all and all of that. So that is, and he employed them and he paid them. Pays them. 
So leave these people alone. And when you see people, leave them alone. They have their space. Okay? So what you are going to do now, when we say stand, because I said we're going to do practical. Apart from the marriage area, in your business, in your career, in whatever the problem is, provoke the presence of the Holy Spirit through worship, through prayer, through the studying of the Bible and the meditation. When you provoke it, you get to a point where the hand of God comes upon you. Just like you see the prophets. And when that thing happens, they say, and the hand of the Lord was upon me. You will know when he touched you. Then the next thing is that subsequently, you're going to be, when you open your Bible to read, you're going to be seeing some things. Revelations, wisdom are going to be coming out. And when you open your mouth to speak, wisdom, words of wisdom, you're not just saying things for the sake of saying, words of wisdom and all of that are coming out from your mouth. So that the, even your, your accuser will not be able to stand. That's what the Bible says. You're going to be seeing visions and revelations and dreams and all kinds of things that are going to be happening. God will be showing a whole lot of things. When the Holy Ghost comes, he will do all that. And then from there, the next thing you're going to do. If, you see, one thing that we don't understand is that. Sometimes in this place, when we worship and worship and worship, and when sometimes when we pray, and you, the atmosphere is charged with the presence of God and all of that, that's a corporate setting, a corporate anointing. You know what you do, a wise person? You take advantage of that city. You know what you do? You begin to call things that have been your need, the things you don't want in your life, the things you, want, you don't want in your family, that business that is struggling, whatever is the, the someone that is sick and all of that, release the word of God. It's like God is speaking. When you do that, it won't be long you see that thing happen. You know, I told you that the last one, oh my God, the time is up. I told you the last one is two. The last realm. Which is the realm of prophetic legislation. You begin to legislate. You begin to declare things. You begin to put things I don't have the time I would have shown you because that is why I read that Ezekiel. If you read that Ezekiel from chapter 37 from verses 1 down to the end, you see what happened. You know, sometimes you prophesy for something, you call forth for something, and sometimes that thing will come in parts. It's not yet complete. I'll give you an example. Somebody is not married, you now pray and call, and pray, and declare. And then the husband now comes. After the husband is come, or your wife is come, you are now married. No, ch no child. What do you do? You prophesy again. Until it's complete. After all, it took God how many days to create the world? He didn't finish it in one day six days. So, decree the first day. If it doesn't have, decree, call it again. Professor, Jesus Christ, you know that blind man that he healed? He spat on the ground and touched the man's whatever eyes. And the man, he said, who do you see? He said, I see men like trees. What did Jesus do? It again, the second time. Uh -huh, the thing become clear. If Jesus could do it, then don't stop. Don't make your. It's not when you say speak the first time and all of that, and then you say ah, and then your heart will begin to grow cold, and then doubt and fear and all double mindedness. You don't do that. Prophesy again. Speak again. Continue speaking it under that anointing, under that influence, on when the hand of God is upon you. 
That's when, when you come to meet a prophet, and the prophet will tell you, eh, bring me a mysteries and all of that, and herbs and all. You pray in order to provoke that thing. And now when that thing comes, and he will be playing it, and we playing it, he will sit down there, and all of that. We know those things he's doing. You'll be playing the music and singing it, and all of that, until that thing happens. The thing will hit him. He come under that influence, under that anointing, and then he'll begin to speak. No one will speak without that presence. If you do, your word will fall to the ground. It will not be effective. You become just like ordinary word. Because you can still quote that word of God without life inside it. That's why I keep saying, it's not in the ranting of the word of God. Uh, John chapter 7 says this and that and that. And uh, then you begin to, that's not it. When the hand of God comes upon you and you are saying that, it makes a whole lot of difference. Amen. Can we do practicals? Hello. It is not sitting down and be complaining about your problem and that some you want to see so so and so and then you talk about your problem and all of the person does not have solution to your problem. The greatest thing is that we are solving your problem. Look at the year 2023, what I said. Set your heart and just do this. Just do this. This is no respecter of any situation. It's no, it doesn't respect any circumstance. It doesn't respect any... It has no respect for anything whatsoever. He said, my word will not return to me void. It must accomplish that whereunto I have sent it. The thing is that if you have sent it under the influence of the Holy Spirit, when the hand of God is upon you and you say, it will never come back to you void. That's what that scripture is talking about. Not just that you will keep confessing and confessing and whatever without the, the Holy Spirit coming upon you. But when you allow him and he comes upon you and you declare that in will, he will change your marriage. He will change your children. He will change your finances. He will change your business. He will change your career. He will change your neighbor. He will change your brother. He will change everything. Amen. Shall we? And it is not a one-off thing. This is what, this is how you're going to live. And guess what happened? When you live, when you make practice of this and live, see, the Bible says the ways, the step of the, of the good man or the righteous man or the just is what? It's like the shining light. It shines brighter and brighter and brighter and that is how because you are living under the, this man this person is the personality is the one that directs everything about it's like Jesus Christ coming to live out everything that is written concerning him that's why that's how you are going to live your life this year everything that has been programmed everything that has been written concerning you that's how you are going to live your life this year did you hear what I said Everything that has been written concerning you. You see, this year 2023, you will walk in it. I say you will walk in the path. You will walk in the path of your destiny. You will walk in everything that God has designed. Because God said, I know the plans that I have for you for this season. There are plans to do you good and not evil, but to bring you to an expected end. You will get to that expected end. I say you will meet that with expectations. In the name of Jesus, nothing will derail you anymore. You have run around the wilderness for long. It is time to move to your promised land. I say to move to your promised land. In the name of Jesus, Kalanda Basayaba. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Kalamagaya. Sivana Kayan. Dakalebra Nekazoba. Play something on the music. Kalanda ba on the keyboard. Mekalavana Sobro de Kayen de Bana. Sing up a song. Gahanamba. Zemene Kayabala. Mehelina Gado Severa Dabaya. Mendo Kozibra da Kayede Vano Severi Babala. Malana Mandea. Kavanda. Mekala Brania Makoto Severada. Manaya, 
fellowship we are pastoring and all of that growth and growth and growth look at what he said in Isaiah chapter 43 verse 7 or verse 5 Isaiah 43 5 please fast I am the Lord and there is none else there is no God beside me fear not for I am with thee I will bring thy seed from the north and gather thee from the west verse 
6, he said, I will say to the north, give up. And to the south, keep not back. Bring my son from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Remember what he said in Isaiah 60. He said, thy sons shall come from afar and thy daughters from near thee and they shall be nursed. You need to call them. That is when you are under this kind of influence in your business, in your career, in every area of your life. In every area of your life. Make decrees. Prophetic. That is a prophetic words. Under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Under the presence of God. So go ahead and make that decree now. You shall decree a thing and it shall be established for you. Give it to me in the book of Job. You shall decree a thing and it shall be established. And God that quickeneth and calleth things that be not as though they were. Begin to call them, begin to decree them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You don't have to depend on any man. You don't have to depend on any woman. You just have to depend on the power of the prophetic word in the name of Jesus Christ. And then God will move on behalf of you. God will move on your behalf. He will going to lead men. of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Remember what you have done now. You have created that thing. Hello. You have made the decrees. Those things have been, remember how God did his own. The Bible says, and God created man in his image and his likeness. And then in Genesis chapter 2, the Bible says, and God formed man. He created and he formed. So faith and works, they go together. Don't just make the decrees. You have created them. You've got to add work to it. And what is the work now? As God leads you, go back to that Job, um, Job 28, is it? You shall decree a thing and it shall be established for you. Go ahead, please. Open the. Thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee. And the light shall do what? What will happen? Light will shine upon your ways. That is, he will lead you what you need to do, where you need to go. Everything, he is going to guide you and direct you. That is that thing that you have said, spoken. He will guide you, he will lead you. Where you need to do X, Y, Z, who you need to talk to, whatever it is. But it must be from the light. It must be from, is the same source. 
Not that you are going out of your way to go and meet somebody and go and talk to somebody. I want to see you. It is my is money for my rent. It is money for my school fees, my children's school fees. It is money for the you are looking for. Don't do that. He is in the flesh. He doesn't walk. He smells. He stinks. I'm talking about something that proceeds from the decrees that you have made. The light of God. And when it shines, you don't need anybody. Say like, the step of the show just is like the shining light. It will shine in your path. It will give you direction. It will lead you to that person. And when he leads you, when God leads you into something, when God leads you to someone, when God leads you to something else, it is different from what you do by your own self. It is different. It is different. Let us live the flesh. Let's who come to the spirit. If we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. Amen. And some of us, your walk is, don't just make decrees and all of that and run away and all of that. Get into the service of God. Get, the Bible said that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. You don't just run away. You don't just use God because you have the um, whatever that you are using God. Walk. When you feel, serve God. Continue in your service. This year, 2023, I'm not just saying it for the sake of saying it. If you put into practice, if you're obedient, the Bible says, you shall eat the good of this lamb. You shall enjoy this 2023. More than all the years past put together, You what will happen to you this year, 2023? In spite of the darkness and all of that, you are light will shine brighter and brighter in the name of Jesus. We are not afraid of the darkness because we are the children of the light. We are of the light. Say I am of the light. Say I am the light because he said you are the light. You are the light of the world. Say I am the light of the world. And I will shine in the midst of darkness. And the light will come. And there will be visibility. And there will be direction. And you will know your ways. And you will be guided the right way. In the name of Jesus. So when they say there is a casting down. See how my hand will be. It will be lifted up. Because there is a lifting. I say my life is lifted. I say my life is lifted. I say your life is lifted. I say you are lifted. No one can pull you down. No, not when you are hooked up with the supernatural. No one can pull you down. I said no man can pull you down. I said the government, the Bible said even the kings will come. They will come to the brightness of your rising. In the name of Jesus. Tell somebody beside you, get ready this year for me. I'm going to be different this year. It has already started. Because I have made the decrees. Because I have legislated. And it shall come to pass. When you hear the hand of God was upon me. And I spoke. <laughs> and then somewhere along the line he said. And it came to pass. Say it came to pass. <laughs> he said concerning me. It came to pass. Everything that I have declared, everything that I have spoken, everything I have professed, in the name of Jesus, it shall come to pass. In this year, 2023, it shall come to pass. In the name of Jesus, our sons and daughters, they shall come to pass. They shall find their ways into this place, in my fellowship. In my church, in the name of Jesus. Sanagayaba, Sokolabaya, Vene Sanaya. I see men rising from this assembly. I see great men rising from this assembly. I see men being made great from this assembly. I see men being made great from this assembly. When I mean men, I mean men and women from this assembly. And those who are watching online, get ready. It will not be business as usual. This year will stand out for you. 
This year will stand out for you. This year will stand out for you. In the name of Jesus, I say you will be married. I said you will be married in the name that is above all names. Those who are looking for, you are no longer looking for the fruit of the womb. For the fruit of the womb has come. Take delivery of your babies. Take delivery of your husband. Take delivery of your wives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name. Power and my